Hey, this is Daniel for Adorner Pro. Today on the set, we're going to make some portraits using Canon speed lights. So I've got Hudson here on set. We're going to uh, we're starting here with an Apollo strip light. We're going to use it to shape his face. This is kind of a directional source. So since the light's coming from the one direction, we're going to get a nice front light, and it's going to wrap around in the darkness. So we'll see what we can get from that. What we want to do is we're creating shape here. So uh, <clears throat> Hudson, if you can like stick your chin like kind of out a little bit too. So yep, exactly. Uh, at this point, I have my, I'm have my. i using the speed light transmitter from Canon, the STE3. I have everything set at neutral, so I'm basically, uh, all my flashes are set at, at normal exposure, which is, in this case, F8 at 200. So, we're going to see what the camera gives us, and we can adjust from there. Okay, that looks good. Here we go. Open your eyes a little more. Perfect. Good. Maybe not that much. Too much? Okay, no, no, it's fine. Okay, so yeah, too much. <laughs> He's looking a little scared now, but that's okay. Um, all right, so basically we've got this nice kind of frontal light wrapping around his face, uh, but what we want to probably do is I want to build it out more sculpturally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a light to the back. I have the same same modifier here, another Westcott uh, Apollo strip. I'm going to bring it in. So one of the things I do to keep things easier is you've got multiple zones with these flashes. So I keep my main light on zone A. This one on B, and then I have a third light that's on C if we want to switch around the lights. So this gives me the ability to change the power of each one, depending on how it looks. So we're going to start off again with everything in the middle and see how that looks for us. So same kind of thing, Hudson, chin out, looking good, here we go, oh, blink that time one more time. Good, thank you. Alright, so now he's filled in. Personally, it's a little bit flat for me, and I think we can change that very simply by having him take, come forward to me. Yeah, I think you actually did already. He knew what we were gonna do. He's, <laughs> take, take like 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 four four inches back towards the background. Right there, stop. So what I'm doing is I'm actually moving him out of the center of the light. It, we should get more shadow towards the camera. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here, now we've created more shadow here. We're still lit from both sides, right? But now we have, now it's a little shadow, right? So to me, that's like a little more sculptural versus the original shot where it was a little more flat. So, yeah, so all I did was I literally just had him move a little bit out of the beam of light. So the light's basically coming here, but not in the front of him. That's kind of the advantage of a softbox. The other thing that I think I want to do is I like my backlight to be a little bit brighter than my front. And since we're using TTL, right now it's just making the exposure normal. But what I can do is take my controller, and that one up there is actually the A light. So I can take my... Go group, then remove it up to A, select that, and I'm gonna bring that up, let's say one stop, and we'll see what happens. This little light on top tells you when you're ready with your flashes. Okay, so same thing. Good. There we go. And now it's a little bit hotter. And I like the way we, we moved it forward. We've got nice shadow here. Tiny bit hot back here, properly exposed there. I'm gonna just pull back and get a little bit more because I like the top of his head. He's got kind of like a cool hairstyle. Okay, good, here we go, good. <laughs> what's actually kind of interesting and you can get a feel for is if you do these TTL flashes, there's what's called the pre-flash that goes off before. So if you're looking through your camera for like a split second, you can see where the light's gonna hit which is kind of nice, you can use like a modeling light. Sometimes I'll just test flash it and you can kind of see that. So I knew it was gonna be good, and it was. Okay, now this is nice, but if I wanted it a little bit more, let's say with an edgier feel, I could. I might wanna switch out one of the modifiers. These, these boxes are great because they're nice and soft and directional, but if I went with something a little bit harder, like let's say just a plain old speed light, you know, your hardness, softness is determined by size. So this is obviously a much smaller source than that. It's gonna give us a harder light. So I have this set up on group C. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here. I'm gonna take away this light. And we're gonna take this guy, which is the hard speed light with no modification. And we're gonna point it. Okay, so go back to, to your position. Good. Yeah, each one of these uh, flashes is a 600 EXRT from Canon. They have built-in radio, and then I have a transmitter on top of the camera. So what I'm going to do here is the, the back of the flash has a zoom function. 
I'm gonna zoom the flash in a little bit punchier because they, they naturally fall back to 24 when there's no camera attached to them. I'm gonna zoom it to 200 so that my light doesn't spread everywhere. Okay. I always find it to be a good idea, unless you're in a really rush or you've done it before, to just leave everything in the middle when you start. So even though I know this is gonna be overexposed, I'm just gonna take a shot anyways and see what it looks like. Okay, here we go. Okay, yeah, so this is pretty dramatically overexposed. Not that bad, though. Group, group C, dial it down to two stops under. You know, it's, it's actually a pretty shot. I'm gonna go all the way to three stops. Three stops is your maximum. If this is still too hot, then we have to go manual. And it's perfect. Okay, so now I have an even amount of light on both the front and the back, but this is a little bit of a punchier light than when we use the softbox because we're using a now bare-headed flash. So it's kind of interesting. You could even, just for experimentation, let's spin you around and reverse it so you're facing, that's your main light. Yep. And it's actually kind of interesting. I think I prefer the soft light on the front of his face more than the hard light. I think it's like taking up too, like right here, I don't really like how the shadows are falling. Where this is much creamier. But it actually did still make it even, yeah. Because remember, this flash is, the exposure on this flash is, it doesn't matter what it's hitting, it's gonna give you three stops under the, 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 the TTL exposure. So that works because of the nature of the, the thing with TTL is it's really accurate when you're shooting right at something, but when you start putting the flashes at angles, it can be a little tricky. That's where you have to play with the ratios. If I just put all the flashes straight forward, they'd always be 100% correct. It's, you have to mess with them when you start doing angles. The one thing that I don't, that I'm not digging about this, I like it, but I'm not loving it, is that the background is a little bit too, too light for me. So we can solve that simply by moving the whole entire set a, a little bit further away from the background. So I'm just gonna take my light first. I'm, I'm standing at my light position. I can kind of see where he is. I know where he's gonna be. So I'm gonna move my light. And then I'm gonna have uh, Hudson move forward. Keep, keep coming, keep coming. Yep, that's what, I know the camera's in the way. Good, right there. Okay, so now he's in the same spot relatively, So I, because I know I like the look of that. I want you to face the softbox though. We're gonna go back to that. And I'm gonna use this one. Same kind of thing here. All right, good, here we go. We should get a darker background. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's pretty cool. However, now that I'm looking at it, I actually prefer the other background. So it, sometimes you have to experiment to see what you think you'd like. I think with the nature of his skin tone, he looks better against the gray. But I am gonna try one thing. If I come, come in here, I'm gonna capture one right now. So basically what I did, I came in, I had shadow recovery up because of where I was shooting. That, that just looked too, too flat for me. With the dark background, I like it much better like this. You got nice shadows here, and the background drops off to black instead of gray. We could also make the background white if we wanted to by putting a light on the background. Okay, so this was on set with uh, Speedlight Portraiture. Next week in store, we're doing the Pro Day with Sony 4K.